Sometimes it is necessary to capture extra information from the user before they can execute a certain action. For example, we would like to offer the ability for users to change the supplier of a product straight from the supplier's edit form. Let's learn how to do that. First, we'll want to configure our supplier's form to display a list of products. Open the project designer. Switch to the controllers tab. Drag the products controller onto suppliers. This will create a data view field. The project designer has detected a master detail relationship between the controllers by the presence of a lookup and has established the filtering on that field automatically. Next, let's bind our new data view field onto the edit form. Let's move it up after contact title. Let's go ahead and see it in action. If we select a supplier, we can now view all products associated with that supplier. Notice that the filter field, supplier, is hidden on the product's grid as well as the product's details screen. When creating a new product from the supplier's edit form, the supplier ID field is hidden and the value is pre-populated based on the previously selected supplier. While this makes perfect sense in that the user selects a supplier and views a list of related products, it can make it difficult for the user to change the supplier of a product. Let's go ahead and implement a custom action with confirmation form that captures a newly selected supplier from the user. In projects created with code on time, all forms require an associated controller. Let's create a controller that will be used to represent the form where the user will select a new supplier. We can call this controller change supplier. We'll want to add two fields to this new controller. The first field will display the previously existing supplier company name. Make sure to mark it as read only. The second field will be new supplier ID. We will not allow null values. We'll want to configure this field as a lookup that points to the supplier's data controller. It will select the value supplier ID. It will show the text company name. Notice that in this case, we're not going to define any views. The app framework will automatically create a form that contains all fields if the controller does not have any views defined. Next, let's add a business rule that will be used to populate the supplier company name field. This SQL business rule will run on command new and phase execute. It will set the supplier company name equal to the supplier company name of the current context. Using the context underscore prefix, we can access any fields from the previous context. In this case, the child product record of the data view field in supplier's controller. The value of supplier company name is taken from the products record and displayed on the change supplier form.
Next, we'll want to add an action on the products controller that will open the change supplier form to collect the new supplier ID and then set that value on the product record. On products controller in the action group AG1, create a new action. This action will have command name custom with the argument change supplier. header text of change supplier. Using the confirmation property, we can trigger the change supplier controller. Let's move this action above the divider, A6. Once this action is executed, we'll want to add a business rule that will get triggered when this action is successfully confirmed by the user. This SQL business rule will run on command custom with argument change supplier and phase execute. This business rule We'll update the products record to the newly selected supplier ID. Notice the use of the parameters underscore prefix in the parameter name. This technique can access parameters specified in the confirmation controller. Let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and select a supplier. Using the three dot menu next to one of the products, let's run the action change supplier. We can now select a new supplier ID. Confirm, and notice that the product disappears. If we look under the new supplier Bigfoot Breweries, you'll notice we have our seafood product here. It has successfully moved to the new supplier. Let's go ahead and move it back using the same action. The product has now been moved back. There are a few customizations that we can make that will make our form work and look nicer. The first item on the agenda is to make the form appear smaller in width. In order to make customizations onto the view of Change Supplier, we'll need to explicitly define it. Add a new view to change supplier with the name form1 of type form. We'll want to add both fields to this view. On the supplier company name field, clear the rows property. To ensure that the field does not show as a multi-line text field. Next, edit the category and let's clear the header text. On the view, add the tag modal max excess or extra small. Let's see how our new tiny view looks.
notice that the form is now narrower than the default width suppliers form. The next thing is to fix the height. All the wasted space can be eliminated from such a short form. Under the form one tags, add a new tag, modal fit content. Let's see how that changes it. Notice that the confirmation form now shows on top of the supplier's form. The height is vastly reduced to provide enough space for all the available fields. Should we add additional fields, the height will expand as necessary. One more thing, every form looks better and is easier to understand at a glance when we add icons to it. Add the tag Material Icon Compare Arrows. Let's go ahead and add this icon under the action as well on products. Let's check it out. Notice that our action now has a new icon. The same icon is available on the forum.